Right, Model X motor. Yes, we've uh, precariously suspended it. Oh, that's alright, you can take the weight. Uh, obviously, uh, that's the tag. Let's get a shot of it. Um, yes, yeah, so um, this is the um, inverter bit there. And then we've got kind of a gearbox, probably partially in there as well, and then the engine. Oh, actually, we've got two sections, haven't we? Because we've got that join there and a join there. This is obviously in the verter, so I'm thinking the gearbox is in these two sections. Um, that's the oil. That's, this is the top oil in. Uh, this is the bottom. Looks like we've got a mounting bolt there, perhaps, as well as there. They've not... Oh, yes, they have obviously gone for the bushes. don't know why they put bushes on these things, because they don't vibrate. The only point of putting a bush on it is to make it... is, is to stop vibration. Looks like there was another mount there that's uh, been removed. Aye. Right. Uh-huh. Uh, that's the motor, obviously. We've got a heat exchanger here, this is quite interesting, um, so this, there's coolant goes through it, and if we can have a good look at it, uh, uh, yeah, it's supposed to be uh, for cooling the oil, um, this is an improvement they did, yes, I think there's the, yeah, there's the tubes, so oil, Looks like it goes circulates through that way, comes out here, and then this is the coolant in and out. Okay, so that's actually a, a coolant, uh, a heat exchanger, and they feed the oil through it. Although I don't know where the pump is, presumably inside, because apparently these have electric pumps for the oil. Again, it's uh, to uh, cool it, obviously, differential. See through it there. I've got the stub axles, we'll probably get those. Uh, comms, yes, and they've cut stuff. Uh, two powers in, and then we've got this. I've pulled the label out so we can get to the nuts, and then I can remove that and then do the same test that I did. So obviously, yes, coolant in and out to the inverter, and then you got this, yeah, oh, I see, right. So they don't have a separate cooler for the motor. That's interesting, actually. Yeah, so basically this is cooled by the oil, isn't it? Yes, this is actually cooled using the oil. And because uh, there's, there's no separate feed. You see, here we are, we've got two pieces here. This goes into the inverter, that goes into the heat exchanger. And it's using the oil to cool it. That's interesting. Very interesting. Okay. <clears throat> now, so we need to get inside. I'm not really bothered about mechanics, but we need to get this off and get inside here. So obviously nuts all round. Round, yes. Looks like a maybe a ten or an eight. Um yeah. There's something in there, don't know what that is. Um the thing that I'm not seeing, which I'm presuming that they've got inside, is there's a sensor for the speed. Now, I'm presuming that they've not got it on this end. Obviously, on the Model X one, it was a... To, to be honest, it was a hack, because they had the sensor on that side, and then you had a cable going right across it into this side. It was like, stupid, why didn't you have it on the inside? Because the rotation of the shaft is also on this end, so you could just simply literally stick it on the end of there. And then you would have it connecting through there to the logic board, which is underneath, and it would be a wire that long instead of a massive loop wire going over there with all the EMC noise. But there you go. Yeah, I, I do understand. I mean, because I, I not only work with um, um, mechanics and electronics and electrics, but I also do software as well for, for businesses. And I do understand sometimes it's a case of that you just got to go with what you've got because you've got to get it out the door and get some money made. And this is how they did it, and that's why they did the IGBT array as well. We really should use modular units. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I said, but I priced this up. Right now, 
to do the same thing using IGBT modules instead of independent discretes uh, is about twice as much. Now that array, if I can actually take it apart, which is another project, uh, but certainly when you build it, um, you're talking about 500 pounds for, to, for IGBTs for that. And to do it in modules, it would cost twice as much, about 1,000. Now, I'm presuming that when they originally designed this, these would probably be a lot more. Uh, it could be up to three times the price, because these, I think, were £4 each now. They could have been like 10 or £20 each. <coughs> uh, excuse me. Right? But IG, IGBT modules did exist at the time they did this, because this... Uh, the, there's a Prius motor. Prius motor has a controller, an IPM controller, and that IPM controller uh, was a 600 amp one. And I'm pretty sure that the module in that was around about 900 pounds. And that was 600 amps for that limit. Uh, so a 1200 amp one obviously would be two of those, which means it would have been about two grand. Uh, but even three grand would have been better. I would think, even if it was £3,000 for the uh, uh, inverter chips. Bear in mind, we are talking about a car which has a price tag of, I think at the time this was actually put out, the cheapest one you could get of these was sixty-five grand. That's more than a Porsche. Right, sixty-five grand. <laughs> and the high-end version of this, I think, was nearer to 90 Something like that. Wasn't it? So to have a three thousand pound inverter in a ninety grand car, <laughs> or even a sixty-five grand car, I don't think that would have made a considerable amount of difference. And I'm talking about the retail prices as well. They would have got these at wholesale prices, which means there would have probably been half of that. Which means that they could have probably made that entire inverter using IPM modules for about a grand. So you know but at the time that's what they spec up that was what was available maybe there was a delay on the shipping or something like that so they just went with this design at the time but um oh yeah it looks really really tech and really really great and stuff like that but really you know what i mean it's fucking huge if you look at it now that unit there this section here of this unit right you can see the size of it that is just as powerful as that and look at the difference in the size now yeah versus all of that <laughs> so yeah basically one of those there one of those units is about the same size as this the whole thing including the logic board you know and it, what it'll be is I, I don't know but I want to break it open inside it will be these that's what they'll have inside it, I'm pretty sure. Bigger versions, perhaps, or even doubled up ones and stuff like that. And they're probably bolted onto this side because it looks like you've got heat sinking here and the plate goes across here. So I'm thinking the electronics is probably on the inside here. And this is the uh, just the heat sinking side. Don't know, find out. But you can see this, this square section here, I'm pretty sure that is going to be a single um, three-phase inverter block. Similar to this one that I've got here. Similar to that one. It's going to be something similar to that, but bigger on the inside there. That's what I'm guessing. But we'll take it apart and we'll see. And it'll be fun. And uh, just so you understand, this is a Model X motor, the rear Model X motor. I'm going to find the exact spec of this, but I think it's about 200 horsepower <laughs> currently. Like that one. That, that was... Uh, 300 I believe um, but I used an uprated uh, I used the same IGBD uh, same inverter set uh, but used my own controller gate drivers were the same basically just use my own controllers and I'm pretty sure I would have got that up to 700 horsepower yep so that means that this one would probably be about the same once I've got a, my own controller on it hey hey there we go let's take a good shot of it Let's see if we can make sure we get there we go. 